Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Moore, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, actually, well, kind of a lot of nothing. It's really, market's really persistent here. This is <laughs> the week before option expiration week. And we got, you know, hammered on Monday. And I thought that lease at a minimum would be retested. Uh, we didn't. We pushed higher, and today we're higher again. And uh, the VIX is uh, up the last three days with the SPs up the last three days. So a little bit confusing, but you got to look at the bigger picture. Uh, you can take a look at chart one. Okay. Wait, so let me get yeah, these. This is, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of the old story here, but it's just worth you know it's worth reminding that you know we're in a bullish mode on the bigger time frame. The third window up from the bottom is yep. that sixty day, uh, three day trend again, and over the last week it hasn't changed. It's still at one point one two. Nice. Anything above one? Okay. Yeah. Anything anything above one point one is is bullish. Uh, so um, you know, can we keep pushing higher? You know, it's uh, it's a possibility. So anyhow, the big, that particular chart uh, shows that there's enough panic in the market. Uh, trend readings above, um, at least on a 63-day, anything above 1.1 is bullish. On a you know one to ten day, is anything above 1.2 is bullish. But on a 63-day, it remains bullish. So let's, let's go to chart two. And you know, I just want to add some. We're going to get some help on this today too, Tim, because even though the market's up, the trend's running 1.33 right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching that. Uh, I've been watching that all day, and uh, so I've seen where that trend actually gives a buy signal when the market's going up. No, I um, listen, I man. I, I I I get it. I I've, I. I I know what you're saying. I've been looking at the trend long enough myself that, folks, what we're talking about is this. This is so unusual. So, because what this is saying, even though the market's up, people are selling, man. They're selling. That's that's wild, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. There's more. There's more uh, stocks on the down, or there's more volume on the down stocks yep. than up stocks. So, which is what you want to have. So. Yeah. No, uh, I'm with it. Was, yeah, okay. it's, it's a good point. Okay, uh, so I went know, chart two. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, chart two is the. RSI on the daily, yeah, this is a daily, you know, back in December we hit above 80, warning that yep. we're probably going to start uh, a, a trending market, and that's pretty much what it's done so far, and this chart goes way back to 2000, what, 2006, and so a lot of times that when the RSI hits 80 on the daily, a lot of times you're, you're at the midpoint of the move up. And it doesn't happen very much. You know, you get this type of signal, you know, once every two, three years, maybe four years. But it's pretty rare. But once you get them, uh, it's, you know, you want to stay long and be long, I guess yeah. you might say. You want to latch uh, on so, to it. Right. Yeah. So that's those are kind of two bigger trends or, or which are up. And chart number three. Now here's what I'm kind of looking for the short term here. And actually, it's, it's, forget three, let's jump, jump to chart four real okay, quick. Okay, one second. That's two, three, four. And you know, and you just mentioned 2006, Tim. Today's the anniversary of the market hitting the lows in 2000, and I think it's 2009, at 666 on the S&P. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. How's yeah, that? I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah we well, definitely I, I remember, remember that. <laughs> hey, isn't isn't tonight uh, uh, the president's speech or something? Yes, yes. That's that's tonight. That's so, the State of the Union yeah, tonight. Yes. We'll, yeah, State of the Union. So maybe we'll have some sort of reaction tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, uh, chart chart number four is the uh, weekly RSI. On a fourteen time time frame, anyhow, this is not the daily RSI, okay. it's the weekly RSI. And when it gets you know around eighty and below eighty five, it gets above eighty five. You're kind of having a blow off, but it gets up around eighty. Uh, you got a, you know a pretty much the impulse wave, and that's pretty rare too. All those uh, tan areas, I try to mark them. Hopefully, you can see them. So. We're not in a market that you really want to look short. If it does, if the market does pull back, you want to buy it because it's going to find support. 
but you know, last time we had something like this uh, came in uh, eighty. Well, that was back in two thousand uh, twenty, going into that two thousand twenty top. And before that was two thousand seventeen, beginning of two thousand seventeen. So, okay. what I'm thinking in general, this market, you know, uh, because it's trending in such a uh, a strong way, I think this market's probably going to trend all the way into July. Is how I'm thinking it. There'll be some minor week, uh, some weeks down, but nothing major. So, uh, ride him, cowboy. So I <laughs> Pardon? I said, ride him, cowboy. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so nothing really major popping up as far as decline goes. So let's go back to chart number three. Okay. And uh, what I'm kind of looking for here is exactly what you said, the trend. You know, I, I was hoping the trend would be up uh, today. We got 1.12 is good, but the bottom two windows, the bottom window is the uh, three-day trend. The next one up is the two-day trend. And actually, I like to see at least one of those, if not both those, up around 1.2, 1.25. And I marked the times in the past when that happened over the last uh, well, six months or so. And every time that got... You know, at that, you're at least looking uh, for some sort of a low for a bounce or something. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe uh, tomorrow after the State of the Union address, they, you know, they... And the, uh, and the jobs the, number comes yeah. out tomorrow morning, too, Tim. Pardon? The jobs number comes out tomorrow morning, too. Yeah. All right. I'll hold. Absolutely. Stay right there, folks. Tim Ward, Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate you growling and prowling with us. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. If you want to give Tim a call, give me a call. The, the Dow right now is up uh, 107. NASDAQ's up 234. S&Ps are up 46. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow is up 100. NASDAQ's up 233. S&Ps are up 46. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Orden. We are talking markets out here. Okay, Tim, we're ready. All right. Uh, let's go to chart five. Okay. Yeah, this is a gold market, so yep. you know this thing. Just is, you really want to see, especially off of a bottom. You know, if the market can really show a sign of strength off the bottom, that's what you want to see. But you know, this this uh, the bottom two windows is the 18 day average of the up down volume for GDX, okay. and the uh, next window up is the advanced decline 18 day average for GDX. In a, in a nutshell, when both those indicators are above minus 10, you got an uptrend going. And so all the light blue areas are times when this indicator is above uh, minus 10, and when it's below minus 10 is in the, uh, the pink area. So, so we're coming in. You know, obviously we're way above minus 10 on both both situations, yes. and the market has been up. I think today will be the we stay up today, which probably will be up six days in a row. But yeah, you know, let's, let's go to chart two. Okay. Or chart six. I'm sorry, chart six. Okay. And here's we actually did. We talked about this back in uh, probably August of last year. Yep. And uh, anyhow, we'll, we'll go through it real quick. But uh, the bottom two windows are the same indicators that we had on uh, chart number five. Okay. But what I want to see here is both these indicators get to plus 40. Okay. And uh, those blue lines on the chart show the times when you got to plus 40 in the, pa in the past. Now, is this so, a weekly we're looking at, Tim, or a monthly or a daily? No, this is a daily. Daily, this okay, is cool. actually, uh, okay. uh, the same ch chart as of chart number five, but it goes back further and so it doesn't quite look the same. Okay, that's cool. So yep. these are, yeah, this, it's the same two indicators, but what you want to see is that both of them get to plus 40. I see. And uh, so back in 2016, we got to plus 40 right off the bat and went higher from February to August and went higher for another six months. And we this did get back, uh, if you go to the current time frames of last year, last uh, April, yeah, it looks like April or so, it got to plus uh, 40, and I was saying on the air, we were talking about it, well, this is probably initiation of an up move, and we should keep going. Well, it didn't. It fell back. It failed, yeah. No, I'm that, with you, right, yeah. Right, and so that was basically a failure, I guess. So there's always, not all indicators work all the time. Sure. This time it didn't work, but right. the previous four did. My point is, you know, we're coming in right now, you know, both of them are, 
are approaching 20, a little bit less than 20, but 20. So if we get to plus 40, uh, we need in general for the uh, the uh, GDX to keep moving higher. You know, you can have a down or two days, but you can't have a down or two weeks because that would ruin this indicator not getting to plus 40. But we could get to plus 40 on this, which is a big F. You know, we got 20 now. We need to get to 40. If we get to 40, then the odds suggest that we got a big impulse wave going. Right. Now, if we got something like, now if we do get that going, let's go to chart five. Okay. This is the whole. What we're trying to do on chart five is get these the bottom indicator, which is the monthly uh, cumulative advanced decline, and the top window is the monthly cumulative up down volume percent to get these two indicators above the mid Bollinger band. Yes. Now, if we can do that, you got a multi-year rally going. Be something like the 2002 low or the 2016 low. Bring it on. Or the 2019 <laughs> low. Yeah, bring the, bring so, the 2002 low on, will you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking is coming at some point because this market can't really trade forever going sideways. Well, you and know, it's interesting, you know, too. Yeah, and there's been enough failures when we've gone higher. Right. And then what you also have, which is pretty cool, is that the price of gold versus the price of the equities, gold is way ahead of the equities, folks, okay? Right. Which, which is really so right. cool, man, okay? So there can be right. a catch-up. We, yeah. we showed a chart on uh, Tuesday was the XAU gold ratio. Yes. And that RSI got below 30, I don't know, last week, maybe the week before, and that gave a buy signal. So, in other words, that ratio went right through the floor over the last couple of months because that's what needs to happen to get the RSI below 30. So that indicator actually gave a buy signal, the XAU gold ratio. If you look at, uh, yes, I don't have those charts. No, no, but, well, I remember yeah, it well. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So basically, when the XAU looks the ugliest, it's it's the most. Uh, especially on a monthly time frame, when it looks the ugliest, it's most of the opportune time to, to, to get in. Yes. So I, I don't know, if, but that ratio kind of really brought everything down. Now, so you had a selling climax on that ratio. You know, just like a bull market, you need a selling climax, then right after it, you need a buying climax. You know, remember we were talking yeah. about the uh, summation index? Oh, yeah. Not, yeah, the summation index. You need a selling climax below minus 700. Then you need a buying climax to plus 1,000 to predict a bull market for the equity market. Well, that same thing can happen with the XAU gold ratio. You get a selling climax. You get an RSI below 30. Then you need a buying climax. So you need a, a rush of, of buying come in yes. to get a bull market. So I'm thinking this is kind of developing this way. That's the reason why I put some of these charts up. Like if you go back to chart six, if we can get to plus 40 here in the next couple, three weeks, and uh, there's a good chance if you go to then the chart seven, you'll get that uh, both those um, uh, GDX up-down volume advanced client indicators above the Bollinger Band. So that's why I'm hoping that uh, it could happen. Yes. It's going to happen. Now, but if you go back to chart seven, okay, it's a lagging indicator. It doesn't try to catch the bottom or top, but does catch the uh, middle 80%. So it already made its bottom if we get above the mid Bollinger Band. And so the bottom could have happened, you know, in February, because a lot of times February in the gold market, it's our reversals, and that's happened this year. Okay. And July is important, October are important months. So we'll see in the coming months. But I'll be watching this monthly GDX real carefully. So if we get up by that Bollinger Band on both those indicators, then we'll start something that's as significant. Um, you know, will be like 2000. Well, maybe, maybe not, but at least be like 2019 and 2016. Because we've been going down... You know, if you look at this chart, since 2021, both those indicators have been below his mid Bolger band going back to 2021, which says basically it's advanced decline and up down volume that the market's pretty much been in a bear market because, you know, it was tough to make money in the, in the gold market, especially gold equities. Yes. And, I'm, and once you get above that mid Bollinger band, then almost all gold stocks are going up. It'll be fairly easy to make money. So. 
Will that happen? You know, we'll see. We yeah. got the indicators to watch. Um, to you know, to, to see if, we, if if it does. If it does, we'll know it. Oh yeah, we got no. The indicators yeah, and it was it so out. cool here, folks. Remember, these programs are archived because as Tim's speaking, he's giving you the numbers to look for, and that's what's so cool as as you know us going forward. You know, just keep watching the numbers. Stay right there. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 133. Nasdaq's up 240. S&Ps are up 50. We're coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow right now up, up 156. Nasdaq's up 253. S&Ps are up 53. And uh, we're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Moore, and we are talking gold right now. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say about gold. You're just... Oh, the GDX, um, rather. Yeah. The, the, the chart on on 7, though, is, the, in my opinion, the whole key yeah. to get this thing turned up. And I put that in the, my market letter. So if we can get that turned up, yes. then everybody, anybody holding gold stocks will turn into a genius because everything <laughs> they'll touch most likely will go up. I know, so, I know. You know <laughs> but until then, hmm. you know, everything's been kind of selective. You know, yeah, it's, it's, exactly. it's been a beating, but... Um, yeah. Uh, there are some gold stocks that have gone up over the last couple of years, but not many. Oh yeah, no, we know how this goes. Yeah, so, let, let's let we just take a quick call. We got we got a call of folks. I mean, Tim, that wants to talk to you about uh, the QQQ. Let's go to uh, Ron in uh, Charlotte. Hey, Ron, what's going on? Yes, hi, hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Um, good, good. I was calling about um, a couple of things. Um. 416 on the QQQ, do you think that's still in the cards based on the strength we've seen the past couple of days? Um, are you, in are the you, near term, you, talking to, you had mentioned it. Are you talking to a, Tom or me? Target. I'm I, actually talking to Tom uh, right now, but I do have a question for you, Tim, and thank you. Well, right. okay, so I suspect that those are going to get tested. The real question is, as I said at the beginning of the show, the Qs are in an ABC up to 453, and we're only at 445. So okay. that ABC is going to finish. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a small one, but okay. because, because we're at such big numbers, it ends up being a, a, a good a, a good sized chunk A to B. Do you know what I'm saying? So. Right. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. So, yeah, we can expect 453 before a uh, serious downturn. That's what it looks to me. And I don't, I don't, it just as Tim, I don't see a serious downturn. But what does happen no, 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 in no. markets in but, general. You know, something, pardon me, pardon me. No, just in general, and Tim and I talked about it. If this gap doesn't get filled, all of us that are along the market, man, it's going to be in, I don't like it when they don't get filled, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If, you, if you go seriously yeah, yeah. higher, then it's going to get filled, man. It's way too big. <laughs> the, this this gap is just way too big, man. So yeah. And for Tim, and thanks, Tom. Um, yeah. For Tim, the Tuesday low. Do you think that's going to be retested? Tuesday's low. Um, you know, I I, I, I think it it might. Um, we haven't touched that. We, we got a gap, also. You know, Nasdaq's got a gap. Um, you know, around that. Well. And the midpoints look like about 4.30. You know, the SP's got a gap there, too. And uh, actually, I don't think it's going to get filled this week or next week. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it could get filled the week after. Uh, expiration week, okay. I think, especially March, which is a quarter expiration week. you got March, June, September, and December. We're all quarter expiration uh, weeks. Mm -hmm. And those quarters seem to lean bullish. And so we only got one more trading day, a day to go. So I don't think tomorrow we're going to uh, 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 test that gap or actually uh, be what? Uh, today's Thursday, be Tuesday's low. And so I think the market may hold steady, if not up, next week. But I think the week after, it could. That's how I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. That's probably when the gap might get filled. But not next okay. Not next week. Okay. So. Um, okay, so if you're short, that. you know, I'd kind of be a little bit scared here because um, – you know, if we get a little yeah. panic going in here, um, it really set up for a bull market on, uh, you know, get some energy to the upside. But um, I, I think that this week's going to be up. Next week's going to be up. How much? I don't know. But I think the week after, 
uh, of all the seasonalities, the week after option expiration week on March is the eighth weakest week of the year, according to seasonality. Uh, so, wow. um, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. It's, it's a it's a week to pay attention to. But very yeah, you know, very next week could yeah. be it could be just sideways. So we'll have to wait and see. So okay. I hope that answers your question. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you both so much. Okay, man. Ron, right. you have a great Thanks one and a safe one. Appreciate it. Appreciate okay, the call. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, this this run in the markets, Tim, <laughs> we've seen them, but this is something else, man. I remember having, uh, and I think you were on the line at that particular point. If not, you just got off the line. This is a long time ago I'm talking about. But um, Bollinger, ahead. I used to interview him quite a bit. And John Bollinger, this is, folks. And... He was explaining, this is when Yahoo was going right through the roof. And what it was actually doing, it was, he was calling it, um, it was grabbing the top of the Bollinger Band and riding it. And I remember this so well because it's like, I was saying to him, like, how far, how long can this do it? He says, man, until it doesn't do it. <laughs> and, it doesn't do it, yeah. yeah. Actually, if you, if you can ride... You know, just touching the upper Bollinger Band, right? But that's that's fine. But once you start going through it, um, like we did it's here trouble. in, in uh, yeah. was it was March? Yeah, March. We're above it right now, right? Uh, we yeah. have that chart, yeah, uh, on the monthly time frame, right? So I, I'm thinking, you know, and I'm thinking, well, we should get a pullback of some sort here because we, or was that February we closed above fifty percent above the. Bollinger Band, I think it was February. It was February, so yeah. that would pre- It was February. Right. I got so it up right now. That would predict March, which is this month. It could be a little trouble. So I don't see any trouble coming this week or next week. It's the week after, because the week after is the eighth, you know, weakest week of the year. And it, it works pretty well. So we may get hit, and that's when the we may see the gap fills on both the QQQ and the SPYs. Uh, and and then, then from there you start going up. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, that's my opinion. That may change going forward. But uh, no, no, but yeah, if you can if you can ride the upper Bollinger Band, just keep on it. Yeah, that's great. But once you start going above it, uh, then that's when the, the ugly could happen. Exactly. So yeah, we'll see how that happens. But it's pretty but, cool, uh, man. I'm telling you. Uh, and then you know what we have now the last two days, Tim, is that the dollar index. Okay. You know, that had been staying really strong, and at, we're at 102, 800 right now, and this was hanging above what it had done. It was having a hard, well, my take is that it was going lower, and it finally did break the consolidation. But, I mean, it went sideways for, you know, 10 days trying to get into this consolidation, into lower range, and it just refused it. But then as soon as it broke, we got two days in a row of it breaking. So... That looks to me like the dollar is going to get down to 100 right now. When we're at 102.822, which, you know, the S&P loves a weak dollar. The commodity market loves a weak dollar. I mean, this could get really interesting, man. So, Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. I think this, this, this March stuff, though, is just a little bit peculiar because I always thought we'd be pulling back today and we're up. But, you know, maybe, the, you know, I forgot the state. A lot of times you get these announcements going on, State of the Union or, or some other uh, – you know, uh, unforeseen information coming out uh, that the market gets affected by. So yeah. I think the State of the Union personally is having an effect on the market. But well, know, listen, it man, it is. it's always a pleasure. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and we look forward to talking to you next Tuesday, Tim. All right. Love you guys. Love you, man. Have a good one. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Dow. Dow right now up 121. NASDAQ up 237. S&P's up 48. We're going to be coming right back.